Welcome everybody I'm doing a tutorial on Serpents 3. This is going to be a tutorial that is going to be based on putting in an enum list like this for selection instead of a bunch of buttons like I have right here. So just as a quick fix for one of my add-ons to kind of help somebody who picked up the add-on, I threw a bunch of buttons in because it would have taken a lot longer to build out the logic and so when they click on one of these buttons it's going to throw a collection and all the objects selected here it's going to name it and it's pretty cool it's a good operator it's going to jump from edit separate loose parts it's going to go back to object it's going to set the geometry to bounds and then it's going to move everything to a particular named collection but what's going to end up happening is I'm going to have a bunch of operators and a bunch of nodes it's going to slow down my graphs and ultimately slow down the add-on we can do we can delete all of those and what we'll do is first off I'm going to bring that mouse size down just a touch it's massive yeah I guess that's where it should be uh, so what we want to do is get rid of all the operators we don't need any more operators and for the uh, buttons here I'm going to get rid of those I don't need any more of those buttons and I already did this setup so I've actually got a, an enum here that I want to definitely save let's see alt P should get rid of that and there we go all right let's get started got a tutorial for you guys I'm using blender 4 I'm using Serpens 3.3. In this tutorial, we're going to go over what you can do to speed up your add-on, to speed up your node graphs, create functions, and we're gonna turn a bunch of buttons into a drop-down like this, which makes a lot of sense. So you see how that just made an adjustment. If I go here, it's gonna make another adjustment. And this is the same operator, but it is in a function on and on property update with an enum list. And this makes a lot of sense to do things this way. Each one of these buttons is tied to an operator, which is tied to a whole bunch of other things. And we don't want that. So it's gonna slow everything down. In order to get rid of all that, we can literally minimize all this down to one setup. We can get rid of the operator. And this goes for just any operator you have. And now all of these buttons are pretty much irrelevant. I don't need any of these. All I need is my presets that I've got here. I'll actually go ahead and create a save point. Make sure to always do that, even though the new 3.3 in the 4.0 Serpents add-on creator is super stable. You still want to be careful. Now this is a function. There's another function I'm going to be using that goes over to my main graph. So if we go over to the main, we'll see that I have the loose parts function tied in right here. So if I take this off, then that goes away. And this is how you can skip across. You can see how slow this graph is right now. I've got to clean this one up too, because this is my main graph and I haven't done a whole lot of cleanup. And now we can go back over to loose parts and see how nice this one moves. It's the goal. So first thing we're going to want to do is get yourself a display property because you're gonna to need to display your enum. And we're gonna make a property. I'm just gonna name it according to my needs. You can name it to whatever you want. This is currently a string value and I wanna bring this down and change this to enum. Now we don't have a dynamic list because we're gonna be creating a an enum map execute to handle this. So we're not using a dynamic list. We're gonna to have to add these items. Each one of these is gonna get it. So it really doesn't have to be anything special. I can just call this parts one and I'll add a couple more here and I want to just copy this, paste it, change it to one and then I'll do this and add that so we have three. And I had three before, but now just to make it a little easier, I can now have um, four or five or whatever I want. 
So I'm going to go ahead and add five items to the enum. And there we go. So now we need to start adding in the nodes. I'm going to add in a property. This is my Serpent Display property. I'm just tag that in, tag that into the interface. And as soon as I plug that in, you can see the other buttons there disappeared, or rather my other list disappeared. And apparently I forgot to reconnect my loose parts function run interface. Voila, there we go. Makes a little more sense. There's always a sensible answer, even if it is saving and restarting. I'm going to do just a little bit of cleanup here. I have a certain uh, way to do this. So whenever I have a group node set up like this, I have to put a color on it and for main graph, like the main items, I like to use a certain color. And so for this one, I kind of keep it outside of what's going on. Always have something bright that I can identify it with. I'll put a reroute in here and let's just kind of move that. Do a shift D, G and Y and kind of bring it down. Then I can have this looking a little bit better. Shift D to copy, G and X, kind of move that over. And now I've got this nice identifiable thing. I can say, hey, there's my function when this thing starts getting kind of big because that can happen really quick. And I don't want that there. I want this one to be above it. Now, of course, I don't want that to say what the previous copied node was, so I'll just leave it blank, actually, and I want to choose an icon that denotes what I have going on. I'll do collections, and I'll choose a nice color that kind of matches the add-on, and I think that looks pretty good. So now we've got parts 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5, and nothing is going to happen until we start hooking things up. So we can go back now, and I'll go back to the properties. Let's close all this up so there's no distractions. And I want to add my on property update. This is a very good node, has a lot of use cases. So every time something is changed, it's going to run this set of code until it gets to the collection. And then naturally, these parts are going to be selected already because I just did the separate loose parts collection and then jump back to object mode. So it's going to jump into object mode with these already selected. But this isn't gonna work because I need a lot of different um, identifiers here. I've got a lot of string values. So what I need to do is I'll type in map and we'll get an enum map execute. Now every time this on property update is executed, something is gonna happen for each option. And each option doesn't need to be this line of code again and again and again and again. And if you've ever watched any of Corza's tutorials, you will find tutorials. If you ever watched any of those, you'll find out that functions are the thing. Uh, real quick, so what we want to do is throw this into a function. I get a function execute. I'm going to tag it in. Sometimes the Serpent's Node Wrangler does not want to work. I'll get a function return as well. I don't need to return anything with this, but just in case I want to, I can. And I'll name this something like F. And it's going to put the underscore automatically, so if you hit space, you can just type in whatever you want. Space parts. And of course, as soon as I say that it puts in the underscore, it doesn't do it for some reason. That's cool. No problem. Now I want to copy this name and I want to bring this over to my function and I'll just type in R underscore and then control V. So that way this is identified. Now when I drop this node out, I'll now have a return and I can select this. It's a good way to keep your code clean so that you don't run into any problems later. So each one of these can be one node representing one, two, three, four, five. Five nodes which is good now what I really need to pull out of there is the loose parts collection and with the latest upgrade you can actually just snap this in and so we'll just call this collection name 
Maybe I got that correct. Let's see. There we go. Looks good. And then down here, it's going to update. It's going to update right here. And then you'll see collection. So now for option one, we can go ahead and plug this in and we can grab parts one and your different string values in the enum have to match what is put over here in the enum map. So you just would put parts one. And then we can start copying these out and then we'll put whatever we want in there. Get this to a more logical centralized location. And I'll just start tagging all of these in. All right, that looks good. And each one of these is going to have to have a name. And it doesn't matter. I'm going to keep it super simple. And I'm just going to do a copy paste operation now. And so I'm just going to tag each one of these into the collection. And I'll grab parts three. And so I just control V that. You can actually right click off in it as long as you don't hit enter. You're good. And you can just do that. Try to do this quickly as possible. But you don't want to mess stuff up just trying to rush through things. So take your time. There's no reason to rush, really. And boom, there we go. So now this is going to read all of these. And in order to get this to actually work, we're going to have to drop in the property as well. So we're going to need the property over here. And we are actually pulling this value, the same value here. So if we pull out a trigger and let's see if the shift P does work. Ooh, I like it. And if I try to print this, I wonder if it works in Serpent's values. Yeah, okay, so it's it's printing out parts one for me and that's basically all it's showing. One, so it's gonna print what is there. Now it should print parts two. Looks good. Parts three is gonna print for us and then parts four and five. And so we run the trigger, whatever is in the enum that's coming out of this value is going to print. And then that is gonna go into the, from the on property update here to the map, it's gonna read it and say, hey, parts one has been selected, run parts one, what collection you wanna put it in, parts one. And you'll see all of this work. Noticed or end. not, but now it's what? actually creating all these collections for me with my selected object. I'm going to get rid of all these, all these dupes, and my selected object here. Anytime I cl click on part one, it's going to now add a collection in parts one. Now it's going to do the same exact thing, only it's going to take that object out of collection one and put it in collection two. And that should be the operation. And so that's how that's working. And that actually looks pretty good. So then, you know, you can name it to whatever you want. You can put an unidentified number of these together, whatever you want, doesn't matter. And now you've got a nice function and we reduced all those nodes. There would have been this many nodes sitting there with operators as well, and then five buttons. But instead we've now have parts one, two, three, four, and five, and then this, just so you can kind of see how this is actually working. I throw another object over here and I throw this one into parts five. It's going to create parts five and throw that one in. So you've, you've now got a neat little way to throw stuff into collections. And if you put it in the right place in your add-on, uh, it'll be visible all the time because this is not looking for anything behind the scenes. It's not looking for an, a property to be active, like a modifier to be there or some other float or integer value. This is literally a serpent's property. And so it can just be displayed at all times. You won't get any errors. We hit shift R. Uh, it's going to compile successfully no matter what. Uh, so that's going to be good. And that'd be the way you do that. And if you want to add some extra functionality into your add-on, you know, or, or rather your function, you can do that. Or you can tag something else on the back of here. And it really depends on what you have. I've got the mesh builders extras here. So if I want to throw in an extra window, uh, I can do that. And I could throw this execute here. So whenever this happens, it could execute and open a window. 
we'll just call this collections just for the fun of it. Uh, you can show the header. What we're going to show, I mean, you could you could pull out, what is that, the outliner? So you could pull out the outliner. There we go. So if we do parts two, just moves that collection. But if I do parts one, it now opens up an outliner. And so maybe I want to control, you know, something, have a, a floating window here while I'm working. And this, I think, will stay in front of Blender no matter what I do. So I've got this nice, neat little window right here. I can open and you could add other options in here. Uh, we could throw another item that says open outliner. And that should be capitalized since that's a thing. And I would copy that and get rid of this. I'll cut that off. I want to bring this down a touch. Let's throw another enum option here for the execute enum map. Let's log it in. And now this blue string value is going to be pointing to each one of these plus the one we just added. Like I said, we can just kind of do what we want. And actually, I don't have to have that function there. This can plug directly in. And let's see if I can get that to work. There we go. No, it goes to the continue socket. You do have a continue socket, so once that happens, you can actually plug in something else as well, and you can treat that. Um, you have an other option, and you have a continue from the Enum map, so it's, it's pretty powerful. And now under here, I can just open Outliner, and I can actually change how this looks, so I'd suggest you go get the MB Extras. It's pretty cool, so on the X, I wouldn't want it to be that big. I'd want it to be like 300 by 600. Show header, show menu, and I think that'll look good. And then does it have it open under mouse? So it's gonna open under mouse there, but I'll turn that off and see where it up, pops up right in the middle of the screen. That's kind of nice. Now I've got this little floating window. If I need to turn this in, and for shorts, this is how I do it. I actually just do this little number right here. I'll move all this stuff down. And then I do my screen res, my, my screen casting here. And I just cast this window and then have my modifier stack open and stuff. And I do tutorials, uh, shorts like that. So this could be very helpful. You know, you can just throw that back in there and keep working. And when you need to get into that to do something, you can do it. Uh, but anyways, I hope this was helpful for everybody. This is how you do it. This is the simplest way to use an on property update with an enum map tied to an enum map execute and then using a function, which is super easy. And this is the very, very dumbed down basic version. But anyways, like and subscribe for more. Catch you guys in the next one. And if you don't have cracks or my other add-on bevel joints, go pick it up. This is a sweet little add-on. Uh, this is a basic version. I've got another version coming out very soon. What it does is it you can you know, penetrate mesh like this. And what it's going to do is it's going to kill all the non-manifold and join it to whatever object you have. It does require a flat surface with no cuts on it at the moment. But if you were to join it and then say, hey, I want to add this bevel, it's going to add a nice live bevel and you can add some uh, different shapes to it. You can do all kind of cool stuff. And just so you can see, that cube has been completely cleaned up. So if I revert back, you can see what we started with. And this cube, since you join it, it's going to create that bevel, which is really cool. And then you can add a bunch of other objects. And I'm not even applying the scale here. I'm just tagging them in. It doesn't work with everything, but it does work with most stuff. And it's using ray casting and grabbing points and reading faces and cool stuff like that. So there you go. And then you can auto smooth that. And this is going to be a phenomenal way for you guys to do some joining of meshes. Uh, turn on cavity on both. There we go. You kind of see that just a little bit better. Anyways, appreciate you guys watching and I'll see you in the next, next one. one.